This video is going to give you five tips to improve your aim inside Warzone 3 and this will improve your aim instantly if you make these changes. What you want to be able to do is land your shots at range like you see me do right here and easily snap between those targets as well which is the main focus for this video. So as you can see here, this is the kind of aim that we're trying to achieve. The very first tip, and this goes without saying, and that is pick the guns with low recoil. Obviously that's pretty much pretty standard at this point. And the reason why we make a lot of class setup videos um, and also a lot of best gun videos and all that kind of stuff is so that you know which guns have low recoil or which guns are the best guns at the time. And then also what the best builds are to make sure you can control those guns in general. So obviously make sure you've got correct builds, make sure you pick the correct guns. That goes without saying, but there's tons of videos already on the channel about that. If you want to check that out, I'll leave a link down below. The first tip is kind of tracking your target as well as snapping between targets. Now, both of these things are actually quite difficult to do. It's probably the hardest thing to do uh, out of all the tips that are actually on this uh, list of what's going to help you get better aim. Now, the hardest thing to do here is to snap between targets, I'll be perfectly honest. Now, on keyboard and mouse, this is very easy to do, very accurate as well. And if you get your sensitivities correct, then you can pretty much snap between targets super easy with keyboard and mouse. Now, on controller, it's a bit more difficult and it's a bit more difficult to try and show you exactly what I mean without aim assist as well, because there's no targets actually here to aim on. But this is probably a better example anyway, just for the controller players out there. So let's say there's a target inside this truck, for example, and there's a target in that window. You want to be able to snap between that one and that one as quickly as possible. So let's say you finish frying this guy here. You want to be able to fry that guy next as quickly as possible. And you need to make sure your settings are correct. And we'll go over the settings in just a second. But the main focus here is practicing here and then getting your aim up there. Now, what you want to do is you want to fire, stop firing, stop adsing as well in some cases and then ads again um you don't necessarily want to be like spraying 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 all the up in, the, in there because that's not how you're going to track it well and it's going to take a lot more time for you to do that so if you're spraying you're spraying all your bullets away as well in between that time which is not what you want to do you don't want to waste the ammo and also doing this swipe motion here when you're not ads is a lot quicker uh, than doing this swipe motion and also you do want your ADS sensitivity lower than the standard sensitivity anyway So you want to get used to basically flicking um, without ADSing now so in some cases if a targets pretty close then obviously you can do that But for the most part if it's that kind of distance there you want to make sure that you're firing you stop firing or you stop um, ADSing in some cases as well and make sure you can track that target So that is just a lot of practice to make sure you're going from here then to here then to here and then back again and it's just a lot of practice obviously you want to get some strafes in a bit of movement in as well so it's a lot easier to do so this takes a lot of time a lot of practice as you can see it's not 100 percent accurate with controller and it, it never will be um and unless you're i mean an amazing amazing player but for the average player this and then getting to here is pretty good that's good enough for most people obviously it's not gonna be 100 percent accurate all the time so when it comes to the snapping that we just mentioned, when it comes to the actual settings that are going to help, particularly with this instance, um, we're going to go through it right this very second because you want to make sure you focus on your dead zones because you want to make sure that when you are getting the maximum out of your controller, you're able to flick pretty quick. So if you do a small movement, it's going to flick slowly. A fast movement will flick really quickly. Uh, and as you can see, the analog stick is moving here, obviously along to indicate that in which direction you want to flick to that target so in the cases with the window uh, and the truck there but like i said this is something that's very important you want to make sure your dead zone on your left and right stick is as low as you can possibly go without the stick moving by itself now some people do like having stick drift and for those kind of people then obviously you can get used to that or do what you want with that one but i'm going to give you the basic tips that you need to actually get good aim Obviously, the next thing that's important for this is your actual sensitivity itself. Now, I recommend between 5, 6, 7, and 8. I think this is the best range of aim sensitivity for 90% of people. Now, obviously, you do get some insane controller gods on 2020, which is absolutely ridiculous. But I find 7 and 8 is perfect for me. That's the ones I've been playing on. So it depends on how I feel on the day. When it comes to response type, you can choose dynamic or standard. Both are really good. I just think dynamic's better between snapping between targets i think that's where it does perform a little bit better uh whereas standard is kind of going to be more consistent most of the time so it depends which one you want both of them are pretty good you can try it both and see how you feel but that is one of the settings i do use 
Next up, you do want to use the custom sensitivity per zoom as well. So if you've got a low zoom optic, I recommend bumping the sensitivity down. Now, obviously you want to be snapping between targets, right? But when you do get that ADS, you want to make sure you can land your shots and focus on the target. Uh, I think between a 0 0.7 and a 0 0.9 is really good. I've been between that 0 0.9, 0 0.85 as well is really good too. Uh, but this is what I've been currently using at the moment. And then when it comes to sniper rifles, I do like to have a slightly faster sensitivity. I do think that helps a lot. And especially when aim assist kicks in, it helps with sniping. And lastly, when it comes to aim assist type, you either want default or you want black ops. Only two options you should be using. Both are very similar now. It's not really too much of a difference between the two. So you can pick whichever one you think feels the best. Uh, but I actually think there's no difference between them anyway. I usually use black ops. So I'm just going to keep it on that. So another tip is tracking. Now tracking is if a player is moving from left to right, so if there's a player here and he's moving from there to there, then you obviously want to be able to follow them as you're shooting, right? That's kind of the whole point. So you can actually make sure you get that kill. Obviously you keep firing here and they're moving and obviously you're not going to get the kill, right? Um, so you want to make sure you can track them. Now aim assist does help in general tracking targets, um, but you want to make sure you're making the most of that and also moving your aim along with it. Now you want to get used to your right analog stick and how fast and slow you need to move it to actually follow that target. Uh, and if they're moving up and down and jumping up and down and all that kind of stuff as well along the way, because not everyone's gonna be running a straight line. But on top of that, you wanna also make sure you're getting the maximum out of the aim assist as well. Now, not only will you get standard aim assist when you're tracking your target, but what also you wanna do is get some rotational aim assist in there as well. So what you can do, instead of tracking your target with the right analog stick, if you move the left analog stick instead of move with them, you actually get rotational aim assist and you'll be able to track them and it's a little bit easier to do than it is with the right stick to be fair so as you can do you can make tiny movements like that and that is making tiny movements now we're trying to do this with the right stick it's kind of a bit harder to get it to do a really really fine movement so i'll do it with the right stick and show you what it looks like so as you can see the aim does jump around a lot obviously depending on what gun you use but as you can see, it's kind of hard to get it to do it with the right stick. Whereas with the left stick, you could make really, really fine movements with that. And it's actually really weird how that works. And you also get better aim assist as well. So you might as well use your left stick to aim. I know it sounds really weird, but if you are tracking a target, move with them. And that way you'll actually be able to track them a lot easier. You get the rotational aim assist and then you will be able to kill the target a lot, lot easier. Not only that, you're strafing and moving yourself. So if someone's trying to shoot you in the back, you're also moving as well. So you're not just a stationary target, just moving your aim about. So the next tip's a pretty straightforward one and it's something that anyone can pretty much do straight away more or less. It doesn't really involve much practice or anything at all. And basically what you wanna do is always keep your crosshairs kind of above that horizon line there. And what this allows you to do is basically, most people run around this game like aiming at the ground for some reason. I don't really know why. <laughs> it's kind of difficult to see anyway that way. Especially when most of the things that you want to look at are like up here, for example, like the zip line. So if you're aiming at the horizon, you will see someone going up that zip line if you've got the correct FOV settings and stuff like that. But obviously if you're aiming down here, then you're obviously you're missing out all that information as you can see now. Whereas if you're aiming up here, you can see a lot more. Now obviously I'm not saying aim up at the sky 90% of the time either. But you kind of want to keep it like a happy medium somewhere here where you can easily snap on our target if they're there, if they're there, or if they're there, you can kind of get that snap. Where if you're here, you can adjust up, then left, then shoot, and then that's when you're going to die essentially, right? So on top of that, this is basically called centering for the most part. Now, centering also works in a slightly different way. So when you are running around the map for the most part, you kind of want to do what I said, which is keep it on the horizon line. And if you don't really know much about what's going on in that specific area, then obviously you want to kind of keep it in between so you know that you can snap to a specific location if you need to. But if you do have an idea of an enemy being in, let's say, for example, this building here in this window, then what you want to do is you want to make sure as you're running towards this building, so let's say you're starting here, you want to make sure your aim is already there, right? So my crosshair is already on that window the whole entire time when I'm running, right? So you want to make sure it's already there. Now what this allows you to do, or roughly in that area anyway, it allows you to snap so much quicker and all you need to do is ADS, adjust slightly and you're already there. Uh, especially if that guy's going to poke at the window or whatever it is, then you can pretty much be already there for the most part. Now, it doesn't need to be exact all the time. I mean, it would help if you're like perfectly accurate with your centering all the time. But as long as you only need to make a minor adjustment, then it's not too bad. You're still going to win that gunfight most of the time so if you're already there then you can shoot now 
that is obviously comparing it to, for example, if you're running in a straight line, there's a guy in that window, you already knew there was someone in there, you see them on the UAV, but you're running this direction. Then you need to aim all the way to then start shooting. So again, we need to cut down the time, fine margins here. We need to try and cut that, that time as quick as possible so you're getting the shots off first. Another tip which is self-explanatory at this point, but I think a lot of people still don't even know about this, to be honest, which is controlling the recoil of your gun. Now, you pick any gun you like, preferably low recoil guns are going to help you in this case because you want to land shots down range. That's kind of the whole point. Uh, and that is why there's meta videos and there's loadout videos and everything on this channel. So stay tuned for that. But for the most part, what you want to do is pick a gun. So let's say you've got the, the MCW here. You fire the gun itself. You see where the recoil goes. But this gun in particular is very easy because it's straight up, right? So that's why you need to get the meta weapons because they have very easy to control recoil patterns. Now, all you need to do is pull down slightly on your analog stick. And you pretty much go from this to this and you can pretty much hit your shots. With a bit of practice, you can pretty much get it to not move at all. Which is exactly that now. So that is a pinpoint accurate gun. Um, so the MCW obviously, as we know, is a low recoil weapon in general now. Now, when it comes to actually controlling the recoil, you don't need to pull down all the way on your analog stick. That is not going to get you recoil control because all that's going to do is move your aim all the way down. What you want to do is put, move it slightly within this negative 20 on the y-axis. That is where you want to pull down. And even if you have a gun that moves like upwards and to the left, then you need to move it to the right. And then again, you still want to be around about this zone here. And then again, with a gun that's moving up into the right, you want to pull down up into the left, down into the left, sorry, to kind of counteract that. Now, obviously, this is the kind of range you want to be in within this kind of 20 range um, for pulling down on recoil control. Some guns are a bit more recoil, so you probably want to pull down a little bit further. But for the most part, most of the guns in this game will sit in this range right here, which is you not pulling down on your analog stick very much at all to hold it in the correct spot. That is the main focus. But another really good tip, as people probably don't know or haven't forgotten about, is mounting in general. Mounting reduces the recoil of your gun just in general anyway so if you can mount definitely use it especially if you are posted up in a building or posted up on top of a building or whatever it is then mounting is definitely going to help any weapon and reduce its recoil now you obviously still need to correct for the recoil control anyway but mounting will obviously give you that extra support you need especially firing down range so the last and final tip i want to give you is what i call the rotational jiggle so rotational jiggle is basically when you're aiming down sights and you try to kill a target at range this guy right here obviously i could shoot him but if you get a bit more jiggle on your left analog stick all you need to do is move your left analog stick left and right you get that rotational aim assist as well and you land way more shots that way i know it sounds really weird to do that and maybe you think you'll throw your aim off but you control the recoil with your right stick and you get that jiggle with your left stick and you're going to get that rotational aim assist and as you can see i'm landing far more shots than this guy now you don't need to do this all the time if you've pretty much got a clear line of sight and it's going to be easy enough for you to kill the target then obviously you don't need to use it but when you're kind of hard of seeing the target in general then you want to make sure that you can get that little bit of jiggle in there and lastly you just want to make sure that you get into the firing range and get yourself some practice in now obviously the firing range is not the best place to practice i would recommend going into plunder and just testing out your aim on actual players that are moving doing everything that they would do in a standard battle royale match but obviously there's no pressure to actually get kills there's no pressure when you die you come back you get your guns very easy do it in plunder don't do it in the firing range